Well, we all know the saying, breast is best, as human milk is generally recognized as the, opt as the optimal for feeding infants because of its proven health benefits for babies and their mothers. This is, of course, a world of breastfeeding week, and once again, healthcare practitioners are encouraging mothers to breastfeed their babies. The World Health Organization says breast milk is the only food a baby needs in the first six months and recommends exclusive breastfeeding for that time. But the pressures of modern life don't always make this a preferred option for many mothers. Obstetricians and uh, obstetrician rather and gynecologists practicing at Netcare, uh, Albalita, Dr. Lenique Lindeku joins us now uh, from our Durban studios uh, for a discussion on this. Uh, uh, good evening to you, Dr. Lindeku, and thank you for talking to us. I mean, it isn't uh, it isn't always possible for mothers uh, to breastfeed, but one can't overstate the importance of it, can one? Good evening. Thank you for having me on the show. It's lovely to be here in this cold weather. So just to answer your question, um, is it possible for all mothers to breastfeed? And my answer would be implicitly yes. I think every mother should, unless there are very, very dire circumstances, try to breastfeed her infant with all its benefits. What are some of the reasons, though, from what you have seen, why some mothers may opt not to breastfeed? I think... A lot of it is associated with fear of not being able to do it. A lot of mothers are worried that they're not going to give their children enough food, that they won't feed enough, grow enough, make enough wet nappies. But there are certain reasons and circumstances which women find themselves in that they think they cannot breastfeed. And the, the most popular of that is probably um, previous breast surgery, where women have either had a reduction of their breasts or implants of their breasts, and they feel that they cannot breastfeed under these circumstances. And the good news is that even under these circumstances, when women have had surgery to their breasts, they can breastfeed and they can produce enough milk. Infant mortality seems quite high amongst infants who are not breastfed, and that's really the reason so many of you are pushing for breastfeeding as the preferred option. Absolutely. Look, breastfeeding is what we call an immunological gap that it fills in the first couple of months of, a ch of an infant's life. Basically, the, the baby's immune system is not mature enough to be able to withstand infections that it comes into to play with. And the breast milk is the mother's way of passing on an immun immunological system, immunoglobulins, basically an army to fight against infection to this newborn infant. So what risks do babies who are not breastfed face? The, I think the way to answer that is to look at the benefits that breast breastfeeding gives to an infant and the risks involved in lower socioeconomic circumstances are definitely greater to infants because if there are not sterile circumstances under which a mom can make formula feed she might be introducing infection to her infant that the infant cannot cope with. So the greatest uh, risk that we run in low socioeconomic standards is infection such as uh, bowel infection, stomach infection, pneumonias, etc. But furthermore, there are um, other benefits that the child is actually missing out on by not breast being breastfed. Of course, the focus is always uh, on the baby or the infant, but there are benefits even in terms of uh, the child's development later in life, are there not? Absolutely. They have found that a breastfed baby's IQ and emotional and physiological and mental development is actually improved when compared to those that haven't been breastfed. So later on in life, although it be um, smaller signs, there is definitely a benefit for breastfed babies. Now, I also understand, you know, uh, there's just not, uh, it's not only benefits for the mother, it's not only benefits for the baby, but you're also arguing that there are benefits for society at large, whether one looks at uh, constraints on uh, the public purse in terms of uh, what is spent uh, around health, uh, but also for the environment as well. 
Absolutely. Well, there are certain cows that are bred specifically to make formula uh, or the powder that is required for formula. And these, these cows actually in their masses give off methane gases, which are leaving a large carbon footprint, believe it or not, jokes aside. Furthermore, these breastfed babies are less likely to um, be sick, be hospitalized, and even on a smaller scale, less likely that their parents will have to take off work if they're unwell. So on a larger socioeconomic scale, it actually makes sense for us to breastfeed our infants. One of the things that seems ironic to me that we're even having this discussion in many ways is this idea that uh, something that really ought to be the most natural thing in the world, a mother feeding her baby, is something that has had... Uh, that many people frown upon, particularly in public spaces. Uh, for those mothers, for example, who are working and are able to bring their babies to work, I mean, are we accommodating enough as a society or is there this unreasonable fear of the female nipple? I'm afraid there is still great taboo around breastfeeding in public, and this shouldn't be the case. We don't sit with blankets over our heads when we're eating in public, so nor should our children. Um, there's a big taboo when it comes to the female nipple being exposed in public, but it, we shouldn't be hindered by this type of attitude towards it. We should be more comfortable with the idea that we are doing the best for not only our children, our future, but our community at whole. Um, I think it starts with awareness, awareness of breastfeeding and its benefits and awareness that uh, breastfeeding a child is actually in the, uh, acting in the advantage of everybody and especially that child that's being breastfed. And when we, when we desensitize ourselves to it, it'll become more socially acceptable, even at the workplace. I mean, some women are able to take time off to breast uh, pump, in, into a breast pump um, to send milk home for their infants that are at home. How soon can a mother start breastfeeding? Well, we encourage ladies to start within the hour. So within an hour of delivery, whether it be a normal delivery or a cesarean section, a mother should be encouraged to breastfeed. And that child will actually show signs that it's thirsty. It'll start to pucker its lips, make noises, grunting noises. And you'll see that if you even put a finger near its little cheek, it will start uh, levitating towards what might be a nipple and might be a feed. So as soon as that child shows signs, it should be allowed to breastfeed. So final question then to you, how do we start changing attitudes? I mean, it is a World Breastfeeding Week, and that's part of the reason you and I are chatting at the moment. How do we change attitudes? How do we get men, for example, to be supportive of mothers being able to breastfeed wherever they are comfortable to do so? Well, it's an interesting question. I think we've started at the right place. The media is the way to go, social media. And I think also with, we must look at those that are leading our country, those that are leading our nation, um, those that are leading as an example should be pro-breastfeeding. So if you see um, one of our politicians perhaps breastfeeding, I know recently the uh, the um, the. New Zealand had a, a lady that a lady in power that had given birth naturally and came walking out of the hospital and was very proud about the fact that she was breastfeeding. So if we have those that are in power, those that are uh, influential in our country, that are pro breastfeeding, that are showing and leading us by example, I think it's a place to start. And then also starting at home. I believe charity starts at home. Our husbands, our partners must be comfortable with us breastfeeding, must support us breastfeeding, and to keep in mind that it's actually saving us a buck on formula. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much, of course, to our guest uh, uh, in our Durban studio, obstetrician and gynecologist, Dr. Lenique Lindeku, who says uh, that uh, the best start any baby can have is with breastfeeding.